Hello and welcome to Let Me Squeaky Chair You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My name's Jason Newland and I will be your host for this episode of quite a boring recording. <laughs> Uh, today is, I don't know what day it is, it's a day, it's in May, I haven't got my thingy open, so I can't see, 14th I think, what I might do, uh, so I'll look at my, my Kindle, and I'm gonna, have to have a look through a very important magazine for very for men you do, you might not realize this and i don't don't mean to be sexist saying that there's magazines for men and not for women women obviously can read this as well but it's a very much a go to for men um again i apologize it's it's not me that says this it's the magazine itself it says you know predominantly this is uh britain's biggest selling men's lifestyle magazine okay so don't, don't, don't blame me. So welcome to Good Housekeeping, uh, June 2024. Goodhousekeeping.com.uk Okay. So I thought, let's have a little read through this because, I don't know, I feel I want to get back to the, to some of the stuff I used to do in the old days, in the old days, in the good old days of this podcast. Did I say only listen when you can safely close your eyes? I've said it twice if I have. Only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Only listen when you can safely mm, 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 close your eyes. So just a reminder that this Friday is again Q&A Friday just for you so this is an opportunity for listeners of this podcast to ask me anything it's i mean it's open for anyone to ask me a question but it's basic well there's no point in me ask ask yeah people that don't listen to the podcast aren't going to be asking me questions are they that would be a bit weird weird or weird so it's Tuesday, and oh, it's strange. A bit of a strange turn earlier. Um, I have acid reflux, which doesn't affect me too often. But uh, I took Vinny out for, took him out. Even the word out is, is enough. I don't know why I need to stop saying that when he's around. So we went, oh, I've got some stuff to tell you about Vinny. So we went and it was raining. So we went outside and I had to go back, come back and get my umbrella. Ella, Ella, Ella. And it, it wasn't raining like a huge amount uh, in, in, in Britain, we use the term, or in England, we use the term spitting. I got a lot of gas today. And like, oh, you and your gas. No, this is, this is not good gas. It's, it's not farting. <laughs> I'm not farting. That's good gas. This is, this is, hmm. this is the old uh, indigestion, heartburn thing. It's, it's been a bit unpleasant. Uh, anyway. We go out, and it's spitting, spitting a little bit. The idea is like, I mean, when I'm a kid, when I was a kid, and it's not that long ago, I don't care what you say, it wasn't that long ago, not in the great scheme of the world, you know? Not if you go through the billions or whatever years the planet's supposed to have been here. My time on the, on the planet isn't a long time. It's just but a brief moment. So, a few days ago when I was 
a very small child, I learnt the term spitting. I was probably about seven. Most of the stuff I learnt for the first time when I was around seven. It, that was the first kind of stability I had as a kid. So I started to learn phrases and stuff like that. And I was living in a little town where those kinds of things stay. There's a lot of... That's one of the things about small towns that I noticed is there's certain traditions that keep. And I don't know how to explain this, but, you know, a lot of the old sayings, old superstitions, all that stuff seems to keep... I don't know if it's like that now. I'm generalising and also I've not lived in a small town since... I was 19 or 20 and you could say yeah but now you live in a small village yeah but it's a little bit different it's a small village in a very very inner city it's a different thing you know it's a different situation um, it's, it, it is different as opposed to living somewhere where you can but I live somewhere where I could you could get walk out of the house any part of the town and walk to another house in any other part of the town you could walk it it might take a little while it might take 45 minutes or something but or an hour even if it's a really long distance but you could walk it providing you know well I can't I know, it's like people shouting at me. Well, I can't walk, can I? I can't walk that of distance. I'm not saying that everybody in the world could walk it. But, you know, I'm just saying as a standard distance guide, you know, from time-wise, because in a car, it's minutes. But technically, walking, it's minutes. It's an accumulation of minutes, isn't it? An hour. But anyway, let's not get pedantic. Mm. So I'm out side and it's spin. And when I was a little kid, I used to think, oh, because we used to, I was told that the, the weather was created by God and God was spitting on us, which was just seemed, just didn't really ring true, if I'm honest. He's spitting on us now, but at Christmas we get presents. Um, Easter we get chocolate eggs. But at the moment he's spit on us. So, and I was good today. I mean, what would he have done if, if I'd been naughty? You know what? What? So it was kind of that. It's sort of, he's spitting on me now. What would he have done if I'd stolen two bikes instead of just one? So that that's my thinking when I was when I was little. But anyway, it was. We went out. We went downstairs, and I had to come all the way upstairs again. And I have to keep reminding myself to hold on to the banisters. The, you know, the railings of the steps. Because in my mind, I'm still 46. Still like 47, 48, not 53. I just keep forgetting. Still this youngster that was like hopping around and bouncing and, you know. And I'm, I'm not quite that anymore. I'm a little bit, I have to be a little bit cautious. And... I think what happened is, do you know, I, I think, I believe we can, or me anyway, I'll just talk, talk from my own perspective. I've aged in certain aspects of my life due to situations that have occurred. Uh, for example, when I fell down the stairs and fractured my back, I slipped down the stairs, fractured my back in two places back in, it was literally a week after I got Finney. So it's a year, year and five months ago. It's December 2022. Yeah. 
and that aged me it kind of added age onto me not in any other aspect but really when it comes to the stairs I turned into a an elderly man just when it came to the stairs nothing else you know I'm, I'm walking I'm getting ready I'm thinking yeah I'm strong I'm uh, I I can do anything and I can I can you know I'm still you know um, feel fit and healthy and everything but then, then when I get to the stairs like wait I mean literally they, I could be in the middle of a of a conflict there could be someone downstairs shouting come on come on and I could go to the top and say yeah all right, then, all right yeah you want some you want some he says, yeah, come on then. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I've just got to get down the stairs. One. Okay, just... And I'll be like five minutes getting down the stairs. And by then, everything would have calmed down. It, so that aged me with my walking up and down stairs. And it's not just those stairs. Any stairs. I'm now a little bit cautionary so I'm more cautious it's just the same why am I saying the same thing twice but differently I'm a bit more careful three times it was that I've had that feeling so many times of missing like going to grab and then missing it and then ending up with a a breakage so yeah other things aged me, I think, without getting all serious, but you know, serious, uh, a recent bereavement, that, that aged me when it came to starting to think about, not starting, but thinking about my age and maybe my health and that kind of stuff. It's not that I never think about that, because I do, but... It, it magnified it you know someone five years younger than me has gone and I'm like oh because without being rude and I don't generally do not mean this in a rude way I don't care about old people <laughs> no I'm joking um, not be it but if someone okay let's go to the extreme if someone 110 years old passes away and I don't know the person. If I know the person, then it's obviously I'm going to be devastated because it's someone that perhaps I, I care about deeply. But if I don't know the person, I don't think, oh, it's it's like d d depending on what happened, the situation. But like, well, that's the natural way of things and everything like that. But if I hear about a young person, a younger person, I think, oh, oh, just, and it's become more prevalent as I've got older, because when I was younger, most of the people passing away were older than me. And I realised, I didn't, didn't notice what didn't notice didn't didn't really wasn't really aware of how things must be for people that are older how difficult it must be because no one ever really mentioned it my nan mentioned it she told me what it you know as she got older family members and all her friends passed away she was practically on her own apart from the immediate family that lived close by and and I, I I I I thought about it, and I thought, well, yeah, but you're you're three hundred years old, and you fart dust. No, no, I'm just, I shouldn't say this stuff. I, I quite like my nan. Anyway, she, she's it's like yeah, I mean, she did open my eyes a little bit sometimes because. She was saying stuff. That, uh, well, she had both her, both her brother and her sister passed away in the same week. When 
this is when I was at university, so I was about 2009. So and then would have been, what, 89 or something at the time. And they were both, one was, one, one was about 93 and the other one was about 91 or something. One was, yeah, so they, one was 92, one was 90, 91, 90, I don't know, they're both older than her. And she said that when they passed away, people were saying to her, generally younger people, uh, were saying to her, oh, well, they had a good innings, didn't they? They had a good life. Got a good innings, got a good, got a good few years. And she just kept quiet. I didn't say anything until I got there. And then she told me, did they not, re did they not realize how disrespectful that is to say to someone? That, oh, they had a good life because they lived to be 95. Almost like it shouldn't bother me. Now, I've got too many windows open. Because earlier on, I, I got really flustered with my... Uh, acid reflux thing and I was like having heartburn and like oh I hope it is just heartburn and blah, 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 blah. and it sort of sent me into a kind of a panicky thing but so I opened the windows to let all the air in and make it as cold as possible you know because I felt like I was overheating a bit and I've left the windows open but now he can hear the old dog in the garden or the new dog in the garden, and he's reacting. But I have my new gadget here, which lets off a frequency, which, to be fair, I'm not sure if it's gonna if it's gonna be heard by the microphone. And it lets off uh, like a frequency which should stop him barking. Doesn't like it. Doesn't hurt him. It's just it's uncomfortable or whatever, yeah. So it's I've been using it all day. I'm not just been constantly using it. I use it sparingly. I don't, you know, I'm okay with him to have a little bark, he has a little little talk and whatever. But it's when he's screaming really, really, really loudly, then I kind of gotta gotta do it. I mean, it only came through today, but last night I was using the the app on my phone, which is kind of the same thing, and that works. I forgot it works. I used to use it before, and I just stopped. And one of the good things about this, this actual, is because I still don't know how to use it. I just press some random buttons. But when he sees it, he knows and he gets to not like it. So just by getting it out and just it's just by seeing it, it will stop him from barking. And so it's it's a training tool basically. Because ultimately, it's like, oh, dogs have to bark, 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 Yeah, but I could lose him. You know, I could if complaints came in then I could lose him. I could, so I don't want to do that. Not for the, if it mean if stopping him from barking means that he gets to live here and be happy. And, and let's face it, he's all I've got. So it's a case of adjusting, making adjustments. He's he's been really good though since yesterday. I think part of the reason, because I was, I, I went out for two and a half hours and to go to the doctors and when I got back he was all like pleased to see me for a very short period of time, then he got bored and, but he started spending time with me, he was like cuddling up to me on the city and when it was time for bed he actually cuddled up to me in bed which he doesn't normally do not when I'm awake he does it when I'm asleep but he doesn't do it when I'm awake and uh, and usually if I've got my my if I'm facing towards the back 
um, facing towards the back facing towards the wall he cuddles up to the back to my back he does he does that lit sometimes when I've literally just turned over so he knows I'm still awake but I wake up facing away from the wall and he's cuddled up to me but he won't do it when I'm actually awake sometimes he's sleeping on my arm and he's just you know things like that but last night I turned my back well I faced the wall and he climbed on my legs and over me and he actually he went to sleep on me and his head was resting on my hips and it felt uncomfortable because <laughs> I only I, I toss and turn a little bit I turn a few, couple of times before I actually fall asleep not I'm not tossing and turning it's just just about physically getting comfortable and because I had him and he was resting I thought I was like holy shit are you cold you alright mate you alright he doesn't like the fact that there's another dog in this building I don't think because this is his building this is his territory and now he's got a dog hundred <laughs> ten times bigger than him and he I don't think he I, I don't know obviously I can't read his mind but he wants to be in charge I know that much I can definitely tell that he wants to be the boss because he's well I think his attitude is well I'm, I'm the boss in this in this flat why can't I be the boss in the whole building so he doesn't realise that I'm the boss and I mentioned that to him well it's the best way to make him laugh actually bless him and my nan said uh, people don't realise that you know that I've known Vinny just every time I talk about my nan you start barking you can't be jealous there's literally a handful of people in my life that I've been close to and you're one of them okay so there can be other people Andre with the two Andres yeah, my nan Nanny Newland see there can be other people Popeye my goldfish so just calm yourself down S yeah so my, my nan just I said like she said people just they're inconsiderate, a bit rude sometimes, thinking, well, it's okay to say that to someone who's just lost both their brother and sister. That, oh, had a good innings, had a, like, no. Yeah, they were old, but the longer they're in, the, the longer they're with you, it can hurt more because you've known them for longer. And this is coming from someone that had lost, she has like 12 siblings, and these were the last two to go. A big old family and she'd lost obviously lots of brothers and sisters and the war and during different times time periods because she was born about 1743 and it's like oh okay I haven't thought about that which well, is lucky she said it because I was just about to say to her well they had a good innings didn't they, they had a good innings because we're all into cricket here I don't even know what innings is is it a one is that when you run around I know, you know, that's, that's, oh, that's rounders. Around. You know baseball? It's based on a little a kids game that we have here. Did you know that? Baseball in America, and it's a huge sport. Well, it used to be. I don't know if it still is. Um, it's based on a little child's game that little children play in the UK called rounders. And that's all it is. But what, what kids do is... They would put like a jumper on different places, so you have to run around the jumper. And if the person catches it, you got to stop. As long as you stop at the, st if you got wicket, if you got like a stick or whatever at a school, they put sticks up into the ground. But if you're playing you f just with kids in a park, then you put jumpers or coats around, and you have to stop. As long as you stop at one of the jumpers, um, the person can't catch you. So basically, they they catch the ball. And then they have to chuck the ball at the at the 
uh, thing. I mean, I, I think generally, if it's uh, I think they used to have sticks and you'd have to chuck the ball out the corner bit and hit it in order to get the other person out. And it would be used with a softball. Like, um, in fact, sometimes they, they started calling it softball. So baseball, softball, but it's rounders, basically. And it's amazing that something that was a little children's game for little kids, like I used to love it, uh, was turned into, and I'm pretty sure in America, uh, the revenue from that is it's over over a million pound a year, I reckon the revenue from baseball. Very popular. Another sport, I never really understood this and I, 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 cricket, I'm just going to say cricket, cricket. There's so many terms in this, in the UK, in the English language, where we refer to cricket. One being, that's just not cricket. Which is a way of saying, it's, that's unfair. You're not playing by the rules. And cricket was kind of like a gentleman's game. And it was a way of playing sport without being sporty. Now, I'm not saying that the professional cricket players are not fit and healthy, which I'm sure they are. But it was a sport that people could play regardless of their um, physical prowess. And I, ever, I only ever went to a cricket match once. And my uncle was playing. And I must admit, I loved it. It was so relaxing. It was really nice. Really nice afternoon. It was a lovely day. And I was I had no interest in the cricket. But I was... Uh, I think there was a buffet. And I was just eating sausage rolls. And drinking lemonade. And it was lovely. Really, you know. I was about... God no, thirty six. So it was. It was. I was much younger back then. It was really. It was a lot of fun, but not the cricket bit. The cricket bit, like, ah. Uh, what? Why? I mean, bowls. Not not the green bowl. Even green bowls, bowling. And bowls, two things, bowling and bowling. Because there's two different, isn't there? There's there's the bowling where you got the things all sticking up and you go indoors and you chuck this thing down the alley and this big ball with a hole in it and it knocks right mate it is cold in there i should i should close that window shouldn't i sorry darling i'm not gonna though i will do but i just can't bother to get up the i've done 10 pin bowling once i played it and the reason I didn't like it is because I wasn't very good. Now, I don't know. I, I thought it'd be easy. I, I, This is the arrogance. Arrogance of youth. I mean, I was, I was young in them. I was like 36, I think. So I was a young man. And I just thought, I remember when I was 36, I was walking around like I was the big shot and you push it. <laughs> pushing over kids, just, you know, tripping up, tripping up pensioners, things like that. Just, I never did any of that. I don't know why I'm saying that. I never did any of that stuff. Um, stealing milk off, <laughs> off people's doorsteps. No, I didn't do that either. I, but I was... I just thought it'd be easy. Like, how can it, how can it be that complicated? And I tell you why I thought that is because I used to see on TV shows people playing ten pin bowling and looking very unfit, like they weren't fit, like huge, like they were ten pin balls themselves, kind of. 
And I'm like, okay, well, if they can do it, then, and the general public can do it, and it's like, well, I should be able to do it. I was rubbish. I was absolutely rubbish. And the more rubbish I became, what became, the more rubbish I was, the more rubbish I became. And the few, I was furious. I did not enjoy it. And it was the first time I'd ever played and I went with a couple of friends, they were married, they were, and we just, I don't even know why we, why we went there, but I suppose they were trying to get me to go out and, because I've never, I haven't really had much of a social life since 2001, really. Um, but we went out and I was like, Ugh. didn't like it because I was no good. Now, it wasn't that I was no good. I was really, really bad. Like, really. In fact, um, as far as I know, the bowling alley that I went to, um, everyone's still there laughing. You know, 20 years later, they're still there, or 18 years. They're still there, laughing. They're they can't move on with their lives. I mean, it's not fair on them, really. It was that bad. It's one of those situations where you just have to move on with your life. Literally, you have to move town, get a different job, change your name. It was. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. But it looks so easy. What I used to enjoy playing, when I was a kid, we used to play bowls where you'd have different, yeah, you'd have basically two types of bowls, balls, big balls, and they're not big, but they were kid size. They weren't like, they were just, yeah, bigger than, there was a little ball, like wooden one or whatever, that you'd chuck, and the idea was you play against someone, it might be three people, two people, four people even and you all have like four balls each maybe th two balls each three balls I don't know and whoever got closest to the ball to the the wooden ball would be the winner and the idea is you'd knock away other people's balls so that you'd become you'd be closer now that was fun because it's a skillful game, but at the same time, it's, I don't know, just, it's, it can only really be played in the summer, it, out, outside, I mean, indoors, I guess, if we played anywhere. Um, I mean, those, it's, is it the same kind of thing as the, the bowling in the Olympics, you know, where they have that, that person rubbing the ice in front of the ball which doesn't make sense to me like that's cheating I mean it's like having someone blowing on it as well from behind I mean it's just come on so yeah that that's all right but I do wonder about AI because you know robotics are now a thing it's coming fast and thick and gooey the old AI, it's very much, um, even chat GPT launched or released a new version today. And it's, they had chat GPT for turbo, now they've got chat GPT 4.0 or 4.0, which is weird because it's been, well, it's been talked about that Chat GPT five was going to be launched sometime this year, so I don't know. However, it is better, and I've been with Chat GPT for pretty much when they first started. When I well, when I first heard about it, but when it was the first, yeah, when they, when they first launched it, I kind of joined because it fascinated me. And 
I'll show you what I mean. Oops. I test. I tested something out, which I'll just open this up. Uh, Chat GPT. There we go. I thought. Well, I've asked it questions before, and I asked a question, and they basically it was. Tell me about Jason Newland. Okay, and I've done that before, and usually Jason Newland is a hypnotist, makes podcasts, lives in the UK, um, and maybe mentions one of the podcasts, and that's it. You know, it's a very basic description. Because, you know, I'm not famous or anything. It's not like I haven't got a Wikipedia page or anything. I've tested it again on the chat GPT 4.0. Tell me about Jason Newland. And this is what comes up. Jason Newland is a 53-year-old individual from Colchester, born in Enfield, London. He has a background in counselling studies with a BA honours degree obtained in 2010. Jason has three brothers, Robert, Darren and Philip. He is currently unemployed and lives with a Jack Russell named Vinnie. Jason has a history of mental health challenges, including bipolar affective disorder and emotionally unstable personality disorder. In addition to his academic achievements, Jason is a practicing Buddhist although he hasn't actively practiced for a few years. He has a unique and admirable commitment to helping others relax and find peace through his hypnosis and boring podcasts, which he has been creating since 2006. These podcasts are de designed to help people relax and fall asleep, reflecting his serene and reflecting nature. It's a weird word in reflecting his serene and reflective nature. Jason has experienced significant personal loss, including his close friend Luke, who passed away in November 2023, as well as his nan and a ferret named Andre, who he once had. Despite these challenges, he continues to focus on mental well-being and mindfulness, promoting relaxation and a peaceful state of mind through his work. That's a lot of information. Um, that's been collected and um, not quite sure how it came about with that but um, uh, and again I, I put it in against and it's just put it in a different kind of order same stuff um, what I could do is say uh, tell me tell me about let me bore you to sleep you're right i do i do type fast you're correct let me bore you to sleep is a podcast designed to help listeners relax and fall asleep created by jason newland the podcast features a soothing and calm narrative style often discussing monday mundane I've never discussed a mundane, actually I don't know what it means, um, topics in a slow and gentle manner to lull listeners into a state of relaxation. The content is crafted to be intentionally unexciting, rude, that's a bit rude isn't it, allowing the mind to drift and disengage from the stresses of the day. The episode's typically include long rambling monologues again a little bit rude long rambling come on on various subjects delivered in a calm and monotonous tone again rude i don't i'm not i am not monotonous monotonous i'm not monotonous monot i can't say it but you know i'm not one i'm not that Mot monotonousness this approach helps to create a comforting and safe auditory environment conducive to sleep. The podcast is aimed at people who struggle with insomnia, anxiety or simply need a peaceful background 
to help them unwind and fall asleep. Uh, as a podcast that emphasizes relaxation and mental well-being, Let Me Boy to Sleep aligns well with mindfulness practices and can be a valuable tool. Then he's decided to scratch it. What are you doing? I'm not sure where to get that out for you. I can't, mate. It's underneath the table. He's seen something that's underneath the leg of the table and he's decided he wants it. Okay, I'll lift the table up. Ready? Take it then. He didn't even attempt to take it. It's like just oh. Uh, so yeah, that that's how weird. I don't know. I haven't got a monotonous voice, have I? I don't talk. What did it say? Crafted to be intentionally unexciting. I've ne- I don't know anyone more exciting than me. It typically include long rambling monologues. Long rambling. Ah, I'm shocked. I'm talking about my life. This is my life, baby. And this is my living experience and boring and okay. The, okay, the podcast is called. You know, it's got boring in the title, but that's or boring the title. But that's like a joke. It's it's a it's supposed to be a funny title because it's such an exciting podcast and it's it's here to if anything to listen to when you wake up to wake to get you more invigorated (laughs) invigorated invigorated and it's like having a cold shower it's like oh i'm raring to go for the day now if i listen to jason's exciting podcast but no i've uh, all along i got it wrong people are getting bored people are finding it I mean helping people to disengage I do wonder in all seriousness I mean I I try and keep things light I generally do I mean anyone listens to me you know most of the stuff I do is very try and keep it light hearted but I do talk about things that are important to me and stuff as well because I'm a human being at the end of the day kind of I'm kind of I'm living a human life, kind of. Um, wow. I don't know. What other, what other questions should I ask? Tell me. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell you what it says. Wow. See, this is weird. I asked about my brothers. They've got his day of birth and everything. Where, where do they get that? Have I... Maybe I've put it in there. Okay, let's, let's do another one. Tell me something they wouldn't know about. Tell me about... my dad see what they come up with ah okay so nothing there tell me uh what's his first what's my dad's name oh yeah d-a-d Wow. 
Wow, this is weird because said I've I put in tell me about and I've just put put his name in. Mr. Newland, a pivotal figure in your life, undoubtedly left a last impression on you and your family. His legacy is woven through the stories and experiences shared within your family. If you could share some specific details, so it's kind of making stuff up now. Not before when it like it was before, saying I was boring, boring. Wow. How how popular is I wanna see how popular. What if we can check? Probably can't. Okay, let me bore you to sleep. A podcast by Jason Newland enjoys a notable level of popularity amongst listeners seeking relaxation. Vinny, come on, mate. Have you got to do that right now? Don't flip, don't, don't, don't flip your ears at me like that. <laughs> Why has he got to do it right, right this minute while I'm recording? He has to do something that involves the most amount of noise possible. Honestly, it's either that or hammer, hammer nails into the wall. It's just like, come on. And the podcast leverages Jason Suvin Lalitliver. And the podcast is available on multiple platforms, including Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Amazon Music, and Spotify. Features a diverse range of episodes, each designed to help listeners unwind, blah, blah. I want to say, since its inception in 2018, and it's grown in popularity, and now includes a substantial library of episodes that cater to a wide audience seeking mental well-being and improved sleep quality. Uh, this is a link. This is to Apple Podcasts. Is it Apple Pod? That's a link to TuneIn. But it's not a link to my podcast. Not a link to my podcast. I don't even know if my podcast is on TuneIn. I wonder if it is. Put my name in there. Let me bore you to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. Hopefully it won't play. Oh, and it's going to play. All right, so first put in... Okay, got it. It is on here. But they've not updated it. 1,119 is the, the latest, so that was yesterday or the day before. But we're still good, so. And yeah, so it is on there. Let me bore you to sleep. Meh. I don't know. I don't know why I'm going into all this. Um, right, I was supposed to be telling you about the good housekeeping. Let's go back to that. Oh yeah, so I took Finny, we got into the rain, it's spitting, go back, get my brody, we go out anyway, okay, and we just go to the park, I'm trying to keep on the halfway because it's raining oh yeah as we went to the park there's a lady with a pram so I get onto the grass and I wait for her to come round as she walks past doesn't say thank you I don't know maybe she thinks I deserve I, I, I belong on the grass but I don't know maybe like yeah well, you should get out of my way well kind of yeah I agree I should but a little bit of courtesy. I know people that wouldn't get out of the way. Most people would, but some people wouldn't. <laughs> so it's like, okay. But it's like... And I said hello, she looked at me. Oh, hello. Okay. Wow. So that's one of those moments. 
as I take him up to the path back again and a friend of his, uh, a little dog, came into the park and they ran around for a bit. He's got he got a few friends. Archie, his his I mean they're practically they're practically in a relationship, him and Archie. They love each other so much. And but this one's also they they really enjoy each other's company. They're around the same size. The other one's a little bit bigger than, than Vinny, but there's not a lot in it. They can wrestle and they really love spending time together. And so he was playing around. The other dog went out of the park. Probably, we couldn't see how far, probably not. In fact, he might not have gone out of the park, but he just went into some bushes near the exit. Finney didn't follow. The first time. The second time, he seemed to follow. And that's when I got concerned, because the second he get, leaves the park is the second that he will never be off that lead again. Because I don't trust him near a road at all. For good reason. He, you know, every day he's on the lead. Okay, I'm exaggerating. But very often when we're on the lead, or we're, we're on the lead, he's on the lead, I'm not. He tries to pull into the road. And sometimes when I've got on it, it's got a bit of slack. And someone distracts me, he runs in the road. For example, if there's someone across the road that he wants to go and say hello to. And it's raining a little bit, but he decides to do a poo right in the bushes. Right, like whenever he goes to the toilet, for some reason, it's it's almost as if he's purposefully making it more difficult for me. You know, do it in stinging nettles or, you know, behind a barbed wire fence or something like that. It's just like, come on, man. Underneath a parachute that's been there for a hundred years and it's stuck to the ground. That's not a true story, but I'm just saying, as an example, in between a row of cactuses, it's just, come on. You know? In the middle of rattlesnakes. Okay, that's not true, but just you know, it's like it's just make it complicated for me. I don't know why. And because I'm I'm there and there was a lady with her dog as well, and I'm bending over to pick this thing up. She's like looking in she's literally looking up. I said, What's what's going on? And I said and I stand up and said, What? She said, well, all the light went. All the light from the sky went. And that's, it's gone now. The sun was just blocked out for a minute. And now it's back. And I realised it was my big bum that did it. But I didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. So we just carried on like normal. Um, it's even worse. When I misjudged the distance. So the other day there was someone. We were both standing on the pavement the pave yeah the pathway because the grass was wet but Vinny decided to do a poo on the grass as he does so I, I misjudged the distance I thought I was a little bit further away from her than I than I was the person that was with me because she had a dog as well so I bend over I knock her over my bum knocks her off off the path she goes flying it's like I'm so sorry she said, how did you do that? I said, I, I don't know. She said, I've never seen a bum as big as that before. I said, come on, come on now. Let's just, let's keep it civil. She said, but you knocked me over. I said, I didn't mean to. Besides, it wasn't me, was it? It was, it was that huge thing over behind me. It's, and she said, no, no, it's, it's not on. It's, I can't believe it. I said, Let, let's just, let's put it behind us. It's just easy for you to say because yours is behind you. Like, why? Why did you have to go there? That's just rude. She said, you're rude. And, uh, yeah, hasn't spoken to me since. I guess that's another birthday card I won't be getting this year. I'm running out of family members. It's ridiculous. 
so we get back I think oh I know what I'm going to do because I'd had a delivery just before I went out so I had some breakfast cereal had some in fact I didn't get everything I ordered because I pretty sure I ordered two boxes of ready brick and I only got one box of ready brick now I haven't checked the email which I need to see if they mentioned it because otherwise they made a mistake now I'm, I'm fine we all make mistakes but it's being delivered so let's have a look at the order delivery order details okay this is Amazon order details 23 items in this order I ordered I can't believe it's not butter one pound 25 quantity one Andrex classic clean washlets moist toilet tissue five pound thirty five I thought it was four pound something five pound thirty five blimey ready break smooth porridge oats 750 grams quantity one uh, I'm pretty sure I put down two. I'm pretty, pretty sure. £3.70. Morrison's Malted Milk Biscuits. 75 pence. Cadbury's Flake Chocolate Bars. Packet of four, £2. Lion's Rich Tea Biscuits. 79 pence. That's the only little snack things I've got. You know, a couple of packets of biscuits and uh, a packet of chocolate flakes bars I don't eat much so in a way of chocolate anymore I just remembered I think I've been talking about I don't eat chocolate anymore now just admitted that I do oh come on we all need lies in our life I've got Kirsty's vegetable lasagna £6.40 for two Bisto shepherd's pie Two quantity three pound fifty eight each. No, what? Wait a minute, I'm confused now. See, this is a this. Oh, I think it was two for six pound, right? Um, hmm. It's three pound fifty eight each for the for the shepherd's pie, but it wasn't six pound forty for each lasagna. Because that'd be ridiculous. I'm gonna have to reach up that. I would never pie buy a small lasagna for six pound forty. That is beyond beyond. But then it's got two shredded wheat, five pound ninety eight. It's bite size, so that must be. For two, five ninety-eight. I'm really getting confused now. The full amount, okay, and then I've got Bisto Cottage Pie, three fifty-eight, quantity two. Morrison's White Super Low Toasty, ninety-nine pence. Border Dark Chocolate Ginger, one pound twenty-five. I can't believe chocolate. I didn't order them chocolate. I don't even chocolate. I don't like chocolate. Buxton still natural mineral water, eight times by five hundred milliliters, four pound. I think that's four pound each. Cravendale, no, it's four pound altogether. That's not bad, is it? Two pound for eight. Cravendale filtered fresh, semi skimmed, semi, um, five. It's eight pound seventy five. And then you've got the family. Bananas, five pound each. No, five each for ninety nine pence. Oh, they've also chucked another chocolate thing in. I can't believe it. I'm never so angry. Cadbury's Twin Pot Dairy Milk Buttons Chocolate Dessert, one pound twenty five. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to eat it now, aren't I? Wow. I really, I'm just going to complain. So, kind of fifty two pound sixty one. Delivery charge, it was £50.61, delivery charge £2. 
and they charge extra anyway they charge extra the price on here is way more than you'd pay if you was in the shop that I'm pretty certain of so I'm supposed to I forget it was great so I put over it was great 10 continue okay good items packed with care Ooh, okay fair enough right continue shopping I don't want to continue shopping go away so that, that should keep me going for the rest of the week till the, yeah till the weekend now boxing's on the weekend it's Tyson Fury against Usyk Alexander Usyk there's also five other big fights on as well um, is there? No, there's not. That's a different. That's a different. Um, there is, but it's not the. That's a different bill. That's in June, first of June. So this one, there's. Who's on the undercard? I'm gonna have to check this. I know some of them. Apaya. Ajaya, Apaya, Ajaya. Uh, Tyson Fury undercard. Da, 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 da. Tyson Fury undercard. So let's have a look. So no matter what, I'm, uh, okay, here we go. I'll go to the Manchester website because that should be. nope come on just list me the information it's all I need all I need here we go who's on the undercard I kind of already know this but I'm now being reminded okay so there's a there's a few fights that I'm looking forward to on that one two particular ones um so Jay Apatia is fighting Mar Morris or Maris Breedis for the vacant IBF Cruiserweight Championship. And Jay Apatia is phenomenal. I mean, Maris Breedis is really, really good as well. But he was the world champion. He was a Cruiserweight champion. And he relinquished his title. I can't remember why. I think they were trying to force him... I don't remember. I don't really know what the politics was behind it. And. But he's really good. Um, apparently he's the one that cut. Did he? Is he the one that cut. Tyson Fury. Which in, which then delayed. Okay let me see. Who cut. Who cut Tyson Fury. Who cut Tyson Fury. Um, me, me, oh. okay. Leaked footage. Leaked footage shows moment Tyson Fury is cut in sparring by an elbow. Ah, oh. call it Alexander Fury. Um, the statement says, uh, it's not officially due. Oh, the little known Croatian. Oh, it's a different. It wasn't him. It was a little known Croatian heavyweight called Agron Smakiki. Because um, he'll be practicing with practicing. He'll be sparring with practicing. That's a weird word, isn't it? He'll be practicing for his world heavyweight championship showdown <laughs> um, with. So he'll be fighting people a lot smaller than him because face it most people in the world are a lot smaller than him because he's nearly seven foot alexander u6 not a small man by any chance not he's i think six three six four maybe so he's not it's not it's not short he just he looks short compared to fury and a few it'll be a lot heavier 
as well. But he will be pra practicing again. I can't say that. It's, it's the wrong word. He will be sparring. Tyson Fury will be sparring with people around the same kind of height and probably build as Alexander Usyk. Because it makes sense, doesn't it? Like if he's because he's going to be punching down the whole time, apart from when he's doing uppercuts. And I reckon he'll go for his body. But as someone said, a couple of people said that I'd make a good, I might make a good boxing commentator. Oh, thank you. I, I forgot to say. I should have. I'm not sure if I did say thank you on the on the Facebook page, but thank you. That was very kind of you. I I tell you one thing. I mean, there's a chance I might get distracted, but it's also a chance that if I'm sitting on a table next to because you know it's never just one commentator. There's usually at least two or maybe three, maybe three, and they'll be talking, and I hear them in my ear talking about stuff, and I'm like, "It's so a shut up." I'm watching the fight. But you have to keep talking throughout. And I don't, I don't know why they have to keep talking. Because the boxers are... It's, it's, I understand if it's on the radio. If you're listening on the radio, you kind of need a verbal description of what's going on. But if you're watching it on the screen... You don't need a verbal description of what's going on. You can see what's going on. So I can understand it if it's on a radio, but if it's on a TV, not really. Well, what about people that are blind that watch telly? Okay, fair enough. But generally, um, you could you could listen to it on live on a radio. Oh, I don't know. But you can... S no, wait a minute. Just listen to the radio, isn't it? It's easier. But then not all the fights are on the radio. Sometimes it's only the main fight. Don't get to listen to the undercard. But you can if you go on YouTube. Because loads, there's quite a few people do commentary on fights. And the whole the night, the whole night, the whole, the whole undercard and everything. Yeah... And I remember I watched one and there was this bloke who was commentating and he wanted to talk about the bloke's, I don't know, something like, uh, he used, the, the, the boxer used to be a hairdresser or something like that. Something like that. It was not really relevant. And then the, the fight started to get exciting and, but this so the other commentators were talking about, oh, he's been knocked down. And he, and this other bloke still wanted to finish his sentence about how he used to work as a hairdresser. Even when the fight was ended and it was like stopped, referee stopped it, everyone's celebrating. The commentator is still trying to finish his point about the bloke, the boxer being a former hairdresser. It's like, Why? It seems so important to him. And there's other times when I watch the commentators and I'm watching the I'm watching the ring. I'm watching what's going on in the ring. Sometimes they'll show you that the commentators talking, but often it's just you hear them. And they're talking amongst themselves in between the rounds and the fight's been called off. You know, the corner they've said no no more, we're stopping it. And the commentators are oblivious to this because they're too busy chatting amongst themselves about the weather and, you know, and maybe about another fight that hasn't happened yet. And, like, can you at least be aware of what's going on now in the ring now? I mean, the amount of times that I see the... They're the commentators and I see that there's been... A headbutt, a headbutt or a foul or I've seen a cut someone's been cut and the commentators are, are unaware of it 
and then like maybe two minutes later oh looks like he's got a cut on his on his uh left knee or whatever and it's like yeah but where were you when it happened i saw it uh another thing i'm just moaning now another thing that i've mentioned this before just that does my does my nut in is going to adverts during the rounds especially during the main fight i want to do this is during the break i want to see i want to hear what the the boxers are being told by their corner men or corner women okay there's is pretty much corner men but you know i'm sure there's there's the odd woman that is involved as well it's a very male dominated sport boxing regardless of the fact that there are lots of female boxers now but it's very different because if you're any good as a female boxer if you're like a, a good level you're good if you're good you'll get a chance at a world title very early on in your career so like a man even someone that's uh someone like um Anthony Joshua had to have 16 fights and he was an Olympic gold medalist two-time Olympian actually if I if I remember if I remember correctly Anthony Joshua Anthony Joshua let's have a look Anthony Joshua I remember reading this and like really it's never mentioned it's never mentioned this bit it's mentioned that he won the Olympics the gold it gold in Olympics but did you know oh no he didn't <laughs> he didn't go to Olympic I thought he did I'm thinking of Lennox Lewis that's what I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Lennox Lewis so um Anthony Joshua won the Olympics gold in boxing heavyweight super heavyweight actually 2012 16 fights he had before he well, it might have been his 16th fight that he fought for the world title let me just check number 16 yeah Charles Martin won the IBF heavyweight title um yeah 16th fight I remember that and it was blimey eight years ago so he oh, that's weird it's really strange because I remember him saying I'm going to fight Vladimir Klitschko and I thought it was right after he won the world title but it wasn't he had one two well two more fights before that Wow, IBF, W, IBO. Anyway, anyway. WB, uh, w, WBA, IBF, WBO. Ah, okay, got you. So I thought, you know, even an Olympic gold medalist, he still had to have to wait until his 16th fight to fight for the world title. If you look at who's the most famous female boxer and um, female world champions, world champions, as some would say, some may say, list of current female champions. Okay, here we go. Heavyweight. I didn't know there was a heavyweight. Vanessa Lepag, Jonansny. See, um, like Clarissa Shields, I think in America, I think Clarissa Shields would probably be the most famous female boxer. I'm guessing over here, uh, probably what's the name, Katie Taylor, would be the most famous, even though she's not obviously from here, she's Irish, but. And worldwide, she's she's really really famous, really well known. Terry Harper's well known in the UK. 
but Clarissa, Clarissa Shields is unbeaten. Savannah Marshall is another one that's, she's my favourite actually. She's my favourite. And what's her name that beat Clarissa, she beat Katie Taylor. I forget. Then you've got Alicia Bug, Bug, Bumgardner. She's pretty much a superstar female boxing as well. She holds all the belts in one of the title, one of the weights. Katie Taylor holds all the titles in a super lightweight. Um, Natasha Jonas. So there's quite a few that have, because it's such a small pool of people, they're really, yeah, they're, they're doing really, they kind of run the things. Siniesa Estrada, minimum mini flyweight, strawweight, holds all the titles in there. Yeah. 26... So if we look at Clarissa Shields, let's okay, let's look at uh Clarissa Shields. Okay. Now Clarissa Shields Olympic champion twice. Gold won the gold at the Olympics twice. Arguably the most successful female boxer of all time. You got I mean, she's unbeaten. As a boxer, I don't know how many fights she had as an amateur, but she must have had a lot to get to the point of winning Olympic gold twice. I don't want to keep point just like right. so. She's in London, two thousand twelve, Rio Janeiro, uh, two thousand sixteen. She also won gold at the the World Championships twice and the Pan American Games once. So she turned professional 2016. She's had 14 fights. She won. Do, 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 do. Ah, see. She won her first world title, where she fought for and won her first world title in her fourth fight. Okay. Fourth fight. So let's have a look at some of the other people. Um, so Chris, Christina Ham, Hammer, she's a former world title holder. So she won the vacant female middleweight title WBO in her eighth fight. So let's find another person that's uh, Clarissa Shields. Just, you see what I mean? That's why I'm going with this. Is There's a lot of Savannah Marshall. Savannah Marshall, my favourite. She had to fight a few fights, actually, before she got a world title fight. That's quite unusual. Blimey, stop doing that. What are you doing? Um, but it was still a ninth fight. She won at the ninth... WBO female middleweight championship in a ninth fight. Um, and she got that from Hannah Rankin, who's another British boxer. She won her first world title in her... No, she fought... She had a first world title fight in a seventh fight, second world title fight in an eighth fight. And she... She won her, f no, she had a fourth, third against in her 14th fight. Oh, and she funnel, she actually won. So she had like five, four or five world title fights. And then in her 16th fight, she won. She won her first world title. So this, again, she got a first chance early on. Terry Harper, she won her first world title fight in a 10th fight well arguably it was in a 8th fight but it was the IBO which is not quite as highly regarded oh no but in a 10th fight she won the WBC 
Um, so then you've got Sandy Ryan who beat her. I like, yeah, Sandy Ryan. So she won seventh fight. She won the WBO female world Ch welterweight championship. Seventh fight. Jessa McCaskill, another big name in the female boxing. She won her first world title. No, she fought for a world. First world title fight was in the seventh fight. And she won. She didn't win that one because that was against Katie Taylor. That was when Katie Taylor was unstoppable. I mean, it's before she'd been beaten, but she's still still unstoppable, I guess. But no one's unstoppable. But at the time, she seemed to be unstoppable. That's what I mean. Erica. So she. This one. Um, what's her name? Jessica McCaskill. She won her first world title. She fought for the first one at seven. Number seven. Fight. Lost. But then she fought again in the next fight. So she won in this eighth fight. She won a world title. Lauren Price. Here we go. Lauren Price. Now, Lauren Price is an Olympic gold medalist, if I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, to 2020 Tokyo Olympics middleweight champion. Um, won huge amounts of medals as an amateur. And she won her world title recently, 11th of May. She won the WBA, IBO and Ring Female Welterweight title in a seventh fight. So you see, this is a, there's, it's just, it's not because they're getting a, a nudge up or anything like that. It's just, there's, there's not that many female boxers, professional female boxers. It's just as simple as that compared to the men. So, Cecilia Bruckus. Um Okay, blimey. Wow. Wow. Bruckus, she's... I've never seen anyone defend the title so many times. She's got to be the, have the whole world record. Cecilia Carmen Linda Bruckus. 1981 is a Norwegian professional boxer and former kickboxer. She reigned as the undisputed female welterweight boxing champion from 2014 to 2020 and is the first woman in any weight class to hold all four of the main belts, the WBA, WBC, IBF and WBO simultaneously. And she's also one of the only 11 boxers in history, female or male, to hold all four major world titles simultaneously. She also held the WBO. Poor. <laughs> it's, it's nothing wrong with that one. It's just, it's just not classed as, as a major title for some reason, uh, 2016 to 2020. Personally, I say it to all of them. There should just be one world title. If you're the world champion at the weight or you're not, kind of like five different world champions. That's just silly. It's silly. I said it's silly. Um, it's just a way of making money, I guess. So this lady, she won her first world title in 11th win. So this is going back. She started in 2007. So probably she struggled to find opponents because back then female boxing wasn't particularly popular um, the way it is so much now I mean it's still never well I say never it's, it's not as popular as the men there's it's just the way it is uh, at the moment but I think that will change based on two things Well, it first based on the personality and whatever of the the boxer, but also the fighting style. So if you if a, a Mike Tyson, if a 
I'm just thinking of how popular Pamela Anderson was in the 90s and she became iconic the most famous woman you know in the the western world for for a while so if you had a mixture of her and Mike Tyson so someone with the ferocious style but someone for some for whatever reason is catching the imagination of the population for whatever reason Pamela Anderson did that I can't remember but you know or someone with a personality that's just way bigger than the average person then yeah then that would be big you know if you had like a Conor McGregor female Conor McGregor who's just gobby basically but can back it up well you know in the early days he could so he could so he could back it up but also be gobby and he became the most famous mixed martial arts fighter ever i mean people that don't even watch mixed martial arts ufc or anything like that would probably know who conor mcgregor is because he's he's worldwide famous just like people who've never watched boxing would know who muhammad ali is and some people would get angry then like, well, you compare conor mcgregor to Muhammad Ali but if you think about it in 20 years time how many mixed martial arts fighters are going to be remembered in 30 years time 40 years time I bet you Conor McGregor will be because he hasn't finished being controversial you know he's he's remembered for more than just being in the ring I mean technically there are way better fighters that have been more success, way more successful in the ring than he has not a huge amount but there have been and John Jones John Bones Jones as an example is arguably the one well, he's one of the best practitioners of the sport that's ever been he's almost superhuman and then there's the bloke that beat Conor McGregor. Uh, I forget his name, Maskovich or something. And he was unbeaten. Unbeaten and he retired. Um, and he had like 30 odd fights or something. So, yeah, and so he was untouchable pretty much. I don't, not sure. What, there was no point really what I'm saying. It's just... I just find it, I just wonder, Victor Bustos, Victor Bustos, even people that I've never heard of, I don't mean this rudely, but um, this person, Victor, Victoria Bustos, um, good name isn't it, Victoria? bus stop um, she won the world title in a, she fought for the world title in her 7th fight didn't win that but then she won a title in her 12th fight and then and this was when there was the FAB Argentinian Boxing Federation oh, ok alright FAB Surely, if it's Argentina Boxing Federation, then it's not, is it? It's a Federation of Argentinian Boxers. If it's FAB. Oh, yeah. So we call it the Argentina Boxing Federation, but they call it the Federación Argentina de Boxeo. So it's basically back to front wording. Uh, or we're doing back to word front, in, back, back to word, back to front box you know what I mean oh Lennox Lewis okay let's have a quick look Lennox Lewis I'm pretty sure he did he won the world title he, he won gold in 1988 but he also went to Olympics in 1984 this is my memory okay let's see if it's true 
you might be thinking, well, yeah, but you could look at the screen before you said that and know it's true. No, well, yeah, I could have done, but I didn't. Olympic Games, no. Damn you. 1988, super heavyweight. What? I'm sure he did the 1984, unless it was... Oh. Early life. Okay, let's have a look at amateur career. Okay, uh, 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 you ready? Ready? At age of 18, Lewis represented Canada in the super heavyweight division at the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. By that time, he was ranked number six in the world by the AIBA. He advanced to the quarterfinals where he lost by decision to Tara Biggs of the USA, um, who went on to win the gold medal. So despite being six foot five, tall and having a very strong punch, his coaches admitted he had to pressure him. They had to pressure him to convert size and new raw talent into aggression. Okay, so he was, he just didn't win anything. Did I say, I didn't say he won anything, did I? At the 1984 Olympics. But he, he's a two-time Olympian. You can be an Olympian without winning a, a medal or, or anything. The fact that you were there and to get into the Olympics is a huge deal. And to get to the quarterfinals is a huge deal. And also to lose to the ultimate winner is also a huge deal, I would say, because it means that you just as easily could have been um, walking away with silver. And he was, so the person, Tyrell Biggs, instead of getting bronze, because cause he won that, so when he won that against Lennox Lewis in the quarterfinal, he had bronze. If he didn't get any further, he'd have gone home with bronze, as would the other quarterfinalist winner. Then he got through to the semi final. So if he hadn't won the semi final, he'd have gone home with bronze. But if he did win the semi final, he was guaranteed silver. As was... No. Yeah, as was the other semi-final. So two two silvers. Two bronze... No. Four bronze... Two quarterfinals. Silver. Quarterfinals is... There's two fight. The main fight, two fights. So there's two silvers... Four bronze. Four bronze. No, two quarterfinals. No, four bronze. And then them two go into the two semi-finals. And the winners of the semi-finals fight each other in the final. So it's four bronze, two silvers, one gold. Is that right though? I don't know why it seems, I don't know why, that's weird, oh well, because, uh, what's his name, um, Wilder, Wilder got bronze, because he calls himself the bronze bomber, bomb squad, that's what he does, he shouts, he did, it's it a quite a funny bit where he, he shouted it out and he made one of the ladies jump who is in the is one of the they still get people dressing up in skimpy costumes I don't know why they do it I just it seems silly like the ring girls and getting into the ring and holding up the number of the next round and yeah I don't know why they still do that it just seems a bit pointless it's just personally, I don't see, I mean, we don't need, I mean, the referee go, if you're watching it, you know what round it is. If you're in the audience, you know what round it is, generally, because the big screen is saying round four, round five. Um, if you're on telly watching it, 
you know what round it is because it comes on the screen. And they mention, they say, now it's round five. And at the beginning of the round, seconds out, round three, or whatever it is. And when they say seconds, I used to think it was, we're running out of, the minute's nearly over, because they get a minute rest in between rounds. I thought they meant there's a few seconds left. The seconds is the name of the people in his corner who are his seconds. They are the people that help him, that give him water and uh, put, uh, fix any cuts and whatever, you know, they kind of look after him in between rounds. They're the seconds. I really thought it was like seconds out, you know, the minute's over. I thought it was just another way of saying the minute's up. But seconds out is like, right, everyone get out of the ring except the boxers and the referee. But they always shout out the number of the of the of the round. So yeah, I just I get confused. It's not the first time I've been confused. I was confused once before. Finney started barking in for a second, but he stopped. I don't know if there's someone in the garden. I think there might be someone in the garden. But he stopped now. He's a good boy. You are a good boy, Vinny. Yes, you are. In your own little way. In your own little way, you're a good little sausage. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Still didn't get to read the magazine, did I? Good housekeeping. A favourite to most men around the world. Uh, so I'll have to read it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, trying to think if anything's happened today. Well, I got my delivery. I'm pretty sure I put down two ready bricks. Now, you know, I can't really prove it. I don't have... I wasn't filming myself ordering it. But I'm pretty sure that I would have put two. Because I remember thinking to myself, because I initially, I, I know I initially put down one. And then I start thinking, well, I might as well do two because I might not have enough money to buy another packet at the end of the week for next week. So if I just do it, at least then it's done. And I just thought, but for some reason they've only delivered one. And it's only got one on there. And I don't get that. That that just confuses me. Because I remember instinctly or distinctly or um, other words that may have the similar meaning. Very strange, very weird. So yeah, that that's kind of it really. Um, I don't really know what I've talked about today. I know it's been concise and to the point, as it normally is, because you know ever since uh, reading, I'm um, like just blabbering on about nothing. I thought, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm gonna really. I'm going to be a little bit more, and I don't know what the right word is, just easier to follow maybe, easier to, easier to follow the trail, trail, the train of thought, you know, maybe sometimes I do move in different directions from one topic to the next. Um, but no more, never again, never, ever, 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 that's it from now on. Do you know the rubbish man, they took my rubbish, but the rubbish, they've not been there yet, so delivery people, the, the, the rubbish people that collect the rubbish on a Wednesday morning, have not collected it, but my rubbish bags are gone. But the other rubbish bags that were there, still there. 
unless they were put out afterwards and my bags had already gone. Where are they gone? And I literally had, I think it was Easter day, I had two black bags go missing. Now, the council do not work on Easter Sunday. Something strange going on here. Someone said to me, or oh, maybe maybe you're being surveyed, surveilled, or whatever. I'm like, well, what are they going to find? I mean, just bags of poo. He said, why would there be bags of poo in your, in your rubbish? I said, no reason. No, just a joke. He used to be. When, when uh, I had Andre, I used to clear out his litter and put it in there. So if I ever put any mail or anything, I'd always make sure it was all together. So if someone was going to decide to go through my rubbish, it would not be a pleasant experience for them. Now I just put pictures of myself in the bag as well, so it's equally as traumatic. So yeah, I'm going to go now. Just remember Q&A Friday, this Friday. Was it Tuesday today? So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So two more days. And then Friday, I normally do it around the afternoon time. And then upload or edit and upload like I do in the morning. So Saturday morning early, it will be released. So hey. Hey, 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 we're the monkeys. And we like monkeying around. We're too busy singing to put anybody down. We're just trying to be friendly. Come and watch us sing and play. We're the young generation. And we've got something to say. I like to leave with a significant poem. And that was today's poem. Made it up all by myself, would you believe? Yep, it's called Hey Hey We're the Monkeys. I'm quite pleased. Oh, just off the top of my head. Wow. Anyway, I'm going to go. I think I'm going to treat myself to some toast. Just some toast. I'm not going to have anything else. Just some toast. Because that's what I fancy eating. Just some toast. It's weird. Maybe strange to you. But it feels right to me. So, I'll speak to you later. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. And also be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. And I will speak to you again tomorrow. Bye.